swoop. There it is. We're at Eagles Camp, baby, at NovaCare in Philadelphia with uh, lots of fun guests. Uh, I never thought I'd be holding on to a bird for dear life. They're literally my biggest fear. But this team wants to get back to a Super Bowl. And they've been very secretive all off season into this training camp. So I cannot, please do not move. Swoop, what are you doing? Swoop, hold on to me. Uh, we have Brandon Graham on the show, Super Bowl champion. We have a bunch of Super Bowl champions. We've got Lane Johnson, Fletcher Cox, and Nick Sirianni will join me for a little one-on-one action. Bye! <laughs> There is a huge mountain in front of us. Division, playoff, Super Bowl. What a throw, what a catch. The Eagles, the only undefeated team in the National Football League. Another takeaway. And the Commanders have won this game. It's for the touchdown. Four rushing touchdowns from four different players. It's clicking. The offensive line is great. Minshew has a man wide. The first team to clinch a playoff spot and they have a stranglehold on the division. Long time rivals meet up in the divisional round. They beat the New York Giants in dominating fashion. changes the entire complexion of how this classic game is going to end. Kansas City Chiefs have won Super Bowl 57. The wrong color confetti for what this team put out there. These young fans in Philly as we are live at Eagles Camp at NovaCare. They're having the time of their lives. They know this team can rebound. Oh, I thought Swoop was scary. I'm glad it was not allowed on the practice field. It is locked down. See, I would lose my actual mind if I... Look at how he's just looking to end someone's life. Uh, Jalen Hurts looking to bring life back to this offense. Six new projected starters. Hopefully some new vibes. But a lot of secrets. A lot of keeping things low-key around these Philadelphia Eagles. Jalen gets the bag, puts up a brilliant Super Bowl performance, and now all anyone's talking about is his lock screen getting back there quietly working with the new guys and the Wiley veterans who will be joining our show today on defense. How about Fletcher Cox, as you heard, hanging out with us? We will have uh, our good friend of the show, maybe after today, our most, like, frequent guest. This will be the third time that Lane Johnson has gotten to stop by. So we're excited to talk to him. Uh, we'll have, what did I say, Brandon Graham, Lane Johnson, who am I missing? Fletcher Cox will be on. And then Nick Sirianni, I'm told, that actual real eagle will come and grab him by the talons and fly him over to our tent, which is on the grounds at NovaCare, where I would say the vibes are really business. Washington, where I was yesterday, you know, they're just excited to, to be building, to be going the right way. This team means business. It's locked in. It's locked down. Very little's getting out. You're seeing very few images of practice, uh, very few open practice images and video, and things are really buttoned up around here. And the Eagles are loaded, but there are some changes as we set the table here ahead of all of our awesome guests on Up and Adams. Okay, let's get to do it. My questions are, can these youngsters step up? And let me show you who I'm talking about. Everybody knows about Jalen Carter, and everybody's talking about him. All the defenders say he's as good as advertised. He, of course, is the first pick. Can we take a look at those uh, those guys? There we go. Uh, yeah, six new guys, big shoes to fill. Uh, Tyler Seen out of Alabama. He's slated to fill in at right guard. Sanders, he's in Carolina. We got DeAndre Swift from the Lions taking his place. Hargrave with the Niners. Jalen Carter, like I said, was there. Nicobe Dean taking TJ Edwards' place as well. And Nolan Smith, who's not uh, pictured here. Eagles first rounder well, should be playing a prominent role in the pass rush rotation as well. So basically, there's a lot of weight on the shoulders of players who have very little experience. And of course, we have coordinator changes as well. And that's my second question, right? Who really are 
these coordinators. And yes, Brian Johnson, this is his third year with the team, but he's calling plays now in this offense that should have an easy-ish time waltzing right back into a Super Bowl situation. Definitely the playoffs, hopefully defending their NFC title uh, and making it far. But sort of who are they? Because you got Stike and he goes to, you know, he's the OCS talking to Marissa McBride, who of course is back home and could not be more excited to be here. What's it called? Dickie Pete's? Chicky and Pete, she was there last night signing autographs, doing interviews, the whole thing. But she was telling me in the car, she goes, Brian Johnson added the wrinkles, Kay. He brought the juice, the creativity. He's gone. Does Brian Johnson have it? It's kind of exciting. Uh, and we'll talk to, a little bit more about him with uh, Nick Sirianni later on in the show. It's an eternal promotion. He, of course, was with Dak Prescott during his Heisman years. He spent time getting the best out of Anthony Richardson with those Florida players as well. So it'll be really fun to see what he's all about. And Sean Desai, someone who spent a long time with Chicago. He's with Seattle last year and he's taking over on defense what makes these guys tick how do they fit why did Nick Sirianni pick them so those are sort of the questions that we're talking about uh, but he was part of something that helped revive Seattle when they had a lot of new talent filling in in positions and more new talent this year of course but he's got a ton of pieces to play with on this Eagles defense it's kind of a nice thing for Desai to inherit here for 2023 and then and I'd like to hear from Eagles fans who are here at practice, by the way, supporting their team uh, at Up and Adam Show. And by the way, go to at Up and Adam Show on YouTube. So many interviews, so many clips, so excited about the subscriptions to this page that we launched like 48 hours ago. So big thanks to everybody uh, for liking the interviews and, and definitely put your questions in there that you want me to ask these, uh, these characters as they make their way over here. Do curses exist? I say no. It's all, you know, thoughts become things, all of that. I don't believe in curses, but I do believe in numbers. And I do believe in patterns. And the truth of the matter is, in the NFC, no team has made it back to the Super Bowl after losing since 1974. Was that Fran Tarkenton? It was the Vikings team? Who else is on that squad? Uh, Bud Grant was that. Bud Grant? No idea who that is. I'm sorry. I'm my, Alan Page, sure. They're shouting out names to me. Great. That's a long time ago. And you would have thought, you know, I really thought that, you know, the Falcons were going to do it, what that offense looked like. They lose Shanahan. Then you think that the other teams uh, uh, that sort of embrace the sucker try to do what they're doing. These teams get to the Super Bowl and then they lose their offensive coordinators. That's no different here. Is the fact that Brian Johnson's already been here for two years enough for me to say this won't happen? Because what, you know, I don't know the answers to this, but you know who does? Their head coach, Nick Sirianni, who's here and really dialed in. And I have it on good authority that he's been doing some real deep research into this part of the equation, into the how do we repeat, how do we get there, where's the lack? And we're seeing it. We're seeing it's the offense. That's what, you know, That's the curse does not exist. The poaching of good offensive coordinators exists around the National Football League. How do you not let your offense miss a beat. I don't know, probably by having awesome veterans like Jason Kelsey and Lane Johnson, some stability and consistency on things like the offensive line. There's a bit of a running back question. There's some other questions we're going to get to right here on the show because if they want to get to that mountaintop and I, you know, everyone's rooting on them, it'd be a really nice story and everybody loves Jalen Hurts and everybody wants that lock screen to change to some green confetti. Uh, they're going to have to rewrite history and break a curse or at least a trend when it comes to offenses in the NFC. Uh, okay, we are going to talk to Marissa in a second. I do want to, I mean, a programming note. This is exciting. This is all, it's as if a script was written. Remember that script writing trend that was going on in the NFL last year? It's the Jets in the Hall of Fame game. Jets, Browns. We had Collinsworth talking about I was looking at Zach Wilson tape. He was on our show saying that. Why? Because he'll probably get tons of reps tonight. Aaron Rodgers making headlines again saying, Zach Wilson, this is good for his career. This is good that he's out there. I don't really quite know what that means. Is it a compliment? Is it not a compliment? Whatever. But NFL football is back tonight. Hall of Fame game. We're not going to see Aaron Rodgers take the field. Collinsworth, of course, will be you know rubbing some dust off, I guess. I don't know. I don't doubt he ever has any him and uh, Tariko. But we're going to get a chance to check out some of these rookies and young players on both sides and I would say I'm most excited and dialed in to see Tony Adams. When we were at camp launching our little uh, stint here of going training camp to training camp on the East Coast, it was every person I asked from head coach Sala to Aaron Rodgers who he picked off Aaron Rodgers at the end of practice. Uh, and I talked to Sala before practice. And then you talked to Sauce about him. And then you talked to Quinn about him. Tony Adams is a guy 
who I think will be featured on Hard Knocks for having a breakout camp and somebody that certainly is going to get a lot of reps tonight to be able to show a national audience. And the first bit of uh, NFL action, those of you who are saying, oh, Browns, Jets, no one's going to play, I'm watching all four quarters, and you don't know you are too. So the jig is up and enjoy it. Enough about the Jets, though. We're here at their rival camp with the Eagles. Marissa, come on. Can we get, okay, how do we do this? Marissa, come share, share a chair with me. No, no, no. Share a chair with oh, me. Thank you so much. Here, Chicky Pete's. What is it? Is that how I get it right? Yeah. I got it. I'm so proud of you. Okay. You've been looking forward to this. Yes. Talk to me about how you're feeling. Oh, I'm so excited. But I, I could not agree more that it's so businesslike around here. It's a little stoic. I'm not really used to that. Especially coming from the camps that we've come from, it's very locked down. Um, but honestly, maybe that means it's all business, all gas, no breaks. Are we just going for it again? As I a think fan, as a fan, when I tell you about this curse from 1974, Fran Tarkenton, what do you what do you make of it? I closed my ears. I didn't even hear that. I don't want to. Um, bad energy. I, think I, I just ate a bug. <laughs> oh, good. I think I ate a full mosquito. Just delicious. Now. <laughs> Protein. <laughs> I think I don't believe in curses. I don't believe yeah. in bad juju. I think we're more locked in than last year. I'm more confident than last year. I can um, confidently say that. Have you gotten over the Super Bowl loss? Because not a We not heard a Coach Sirianni still watches it. Yeah. No, I haven't even watched the behind the scenes uh, NFL yeah. films. I've refused to. I just it's act like, like it didn't exist. This morning I was listening to Adele full blast, <laughs> just having a moment. Like sometimes you just want to be sad. Absolutely. And steep in it like a, you know, yeah, I like mean, a chamomile tea before bedtime. Hamilton can, t can tell you he was with me after that Super Bowl loss. I didn't speak for. At least oh five God. hours. You, were, you know that's you were, you a were lot for me. miserable the next morning. It I was mean, unbelievable. I didn't but like not today. Now. It's not a new today. era. It's yeah. a new day. They're trying to make it back. We're going to have Fletcher Cox. We yeah. are going to have Lane Johnson, mm -hmm. Nick Sirianni, and you tell me who you're going to be interviewing today. A Brandon Graham. Baby. Ah! BG. I'm so excited. We're I can't wait get to talk them. to you. We got to bring them. Can we chill those Capri Suns? Absolutely. We got to get those on I'll ice for these ice. guys. We'll have them after practice. Nick Sirianni will be on this show. Keep sending your questions. We'll ask about the running back. We'll ask about how they're playing Creed at practice. Why? Divisive. And how about this guy? Is Swoop dancing to Creed right now? How do we I go from Meek Mill to that? There it is. Look at those moves. We'll be back live from Eagles Camp. It's up in Adams. Yeah. Go Swoop. Get that ring, baby. Go Swoop. Get Swoop. All right, Eagles camp, we are live here up in Adam's show, welcoming Nick Sirianni live in a bit. Oh, I got a questions for you guys. Uh, hey, Kelsey. Hey, guys out there practicing. I don't see Kelsey out there. He's probably just drinking a Capri Sun on the sidelines. That's okay. These are the dudes, the Lane Johnsons of the world, that are going to be blocking for my little fantasy bit from Eagles camp. It's the new edition. No more Miles Sanders. And we have to talk about former Lion, DeAndre Swift, and what he can do in this offense. Great offensive line. By the way, who called that they'd be the best offensive line going into last season? Our show did! And take a look at this. DeAndre Swift on Fantasy Pros is 28th in PPR leagues. That means he's coming off the board, guys, in like the mid-sixth-ish round. That's disrespectful. It truly is. Okay, it's low. Uh, but, I, you know, I kind of think it talks about depth and uncertainty at the running back spot from a fantasy perspective. You're taking Christian McCaffrey first overall, sure. But when it gets to it, like, I don't think I'm taking a running back. If I'm in the first seven picks, I'm trading to the end of the first round, and I'm loading up with these running backs later, like a value, like DeAndre Swift. It's a huge opportunity for value if you grab him in fantasy. And when you look at the kind of player that DeAndre Swift has always been with this offensive line, I think we could have magic happen. The problem with him where you and where you find value in fantasy is that he's missed over 10 games. He's missed 10 over the last three years. Guys, he's only started in 16 to 40 games that he's played in his entire career. But if you take a look at this, he's still fifth among running backs with 156 catches over that span. 156 PPR. So now you put him with that O-line, these coaches, Brian Johnson, they seem committed to using him in the pass game. So Eagles running backs caught 61 passes last year combined, okay? Everyone in Philly has made it clear that that's going to change with Smith Swift in the mix, okay? Kenneth Gainwell has said, quote, he's pretty sure that's why the Eagles brought in DeAndre Swift to get those catches up from 61. Sirianni is saying Swift's unique as a pass catcher. Johnson is saying, and alluded, I'm looking at the quotes we wrote down here, new wrinkles. Steichen had a lot of wrinkles, new wrinkles in this offense. We're going to move him around. We're going to get the best out of him. I love it. It makes Swift a certified PPR steal if you can grab him in the fifth round, sixth round. And I think he'll stay around the sixth round because I think people question the running back usage with this team. They're questioning the new offensive uh, play caller. They're questioning the fact that we're not seeing clips. We're not hearing much. Maybe I'll squeeze a little bit. 
out of coach Nick Sirianni about his new piece out there and how effective he can be to taking them back to the promised land and then to the promised land with that confetti. So uh, Swift, I think his PPR value in the next couple of weeks of the preseason, I don't see it going up. I think they're going to use him. He'll stay a steal and a value, high-scoring offense, some great matchups this year. Swift in the sixth round, fantasy bits. All right. Now, yesterday I was at Commander's Camp, and I sat down with Antonio Gibson talking about how he'd rather have been a wide receiver back at Memphis. He'd rather play wide receiver all the way through with what's going on at the running back position, but he's ready to go with Eric Bieniemy calling the shots, and he had a lot of faith in his quarterback, Sam Howell, saying he can hit tight windows, throw in tight spaces, uh, and there was a lot to be said about Sam Howell. Chase Young calling him mature. Ron Rivera saying he's got the moxie of a Drew Brees, or no, the mox, not the mox, no, not the, sorry, the arm of a Drew Brees and the playing style, potentially the moxie of a Jim McMahon, minus the shades maybe, and the swagger. But we talked to Sam Howell, and we'd like you to meet him here on Up and Adams. The NFL's best secret is this guy sitting next to me. A very rare job. 32 guys get to do it, and he is one of them for the Washington Commanders with all the new energy, all the new vibes. Sam Howell is sitting here with me. Thanks for taking the time. For the fans, after practice, you must be exhausted. Oh, yeah. No, nah, it was... <laughs> no, nah, yeah. No, that... nah, just shout out to the fans. They're the best for coming out here today. It just, it just makes what we do so much more fun. Um, we, have the be- we have the best fans in the NFL. Uh, so it's just, it's just a, it's a great blessing to be a part of this franchise. Jahan Dotson joined me, and he was really excited about the turnout. He was really, it, it's really meaningful for him. What does it mean to you that these fans take time? I met a guy today who just didn't go to work. He didn't go to work because he wanted to be here. What does that mean to you? Yeah, honestly, it means the world to us as players. Um, just kind of just everything this organization has been through the past couple of years. And just to have this new excitement and new energy with the new ownership, it's just so much fun to be a part of. And just really us as players, you know, we're just trying to maximize on the opportunity that we have. Um, we have so much momentum and so much energy as an organization, and we just got to try to capitalize with that on the field. Do you have Magic Johnson's phone number? I don't have his phone number. Hopefully, I'll get it get it soon. He's doing this it. like yacht thing. He's on this in Greece on this crazy yacht. He's pretending that it's like a normal person's <laughs> vacation, but it's clearly not. What do you have to do this year to get invited on that yacht? Win the Super Bowl, probably. Um, but nah, definitely win a lot of games. And you know, we everyone in the building, we all want to show these owners that everyone here right now can can be successful in this league. Um, and so that's what we're gonna do. I asked the fans all morning, what will success be for your team this year? Tough <laughs> NFC East, all of that. Mm-hmm. And they, a lot of people answered, just show us that we found our quarterback. What do you think? Yeah, uh, I mean, obviously this this organization's kind of been searching for a, a stable quarterback. Um, and uh, you know, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna, I'm gonna give this this team, this organization, everything I got, and try to be that guy. Um, and I personally feel like I can be that guy. Um, so yeah, I mean, they're gonna get everything I got. They're gonna get my best, and I'm gonna try to do everything I can to help this team win. And they're doing everything they can to surround you with support. I made the claim on this show that I think you have maybe the best wide receiver trio in the NFL. Put some respect on Samuel, on Dotson, and mm-hmm. on a guy who we know can catch the ball in Terry McLaurin. Yeah, How good guys, are they? They're really good. And this it's been so much fun to get going with those guys this spring because last year when I was here, I really didn't get to throw to those guys at all until the last week of the season. So like I was just sitting back and watching like dang, I wish I, I hope I get the opportunity to play with these guys. So I'm I'm so excited. You know, we got some time to get in the off season and we've been we've been picking up some good stuff here. So I'm I'm so so excited to throw with those guys. I just gotta try to do my best to let them let them do their thing. Um, and we got some really good guys and behind those three we have some really good guys as well. We have we have a really deep receiver room, so it makes our job a lot of fun. Just give an extra little love nod to somebody out there. Give a little like who's in that, deep in that receiver room. Mm-hmm. Who's having a great camp today? Yeah, definitely De'Ami Brown. Um, he played with me at North Carolina, my guy. Um, he's, he's doing, he's doing <laughs> of a heck of a job out here. So we have that connection. Um, so, yeah, definitely De'Ami Brown. Can you say something nice about South Carolina? I can't, no. <laughs> Nothing? You, can you say something nice about Duke? Definitely not Duke. Wow. He can't do it. He can't do it. Take me back to this. You know, it's funny because... <laughs> That was, you know, a rival for you at your UNC, at your North Carolina career and all of that. Now your rival is the Cowboys, but you grew up loving them. And then in week 18, you get this chance to go out mm-hmm. there, and you are so freaking fun to watch. Take me back to what, the, what your favorite moment in your NFL experience has been. Yeah, What's the best thing that's um, happened to you in the NFL? Yeah, obviously just getting an opportunity to play in that game against the Cowboys. And I was a Cowboys fan growing up. It was just so much fun, and the Cowboys were playing something at the time. Um, so it was, it was a cool opportunity for me. But um, 
definitely just, you know, my first pass I threw was a touchdown. Um, and that moment was so cool. And just seeing everybody on the sideline happy for me. And I feel like I'd worked so hard throughout the year and really didn't get an opportunity to play. Um, and so when I did get that opportunity, it was just so much fun to get out there and, and play with such good guys. And we have such a gr great group of guys on this team. And it's, it's so much fun coming into work every day and being around my teammates. So definitely that for sure. Um, the whole world wants to know if you've if you're off of your chicken thing. Now, I know you went to Chick-fil-A yesterday and dropped like $50, which is insane, <laughs> with Jahan Dotson, but have you tried anything else, and why is everyone obsessed with this? Yeah, I don't know why. Everyone's always kind of been obsessed with my diet, but honestly, since I was a kid, I just really didn't like red meat. Um, and so, like, I try it. You know, it's, it's not like... I don't try it. Like everyone, I always tell everyone, like, if you think you have the best steak in the world, I'll try it. And I always try it. And I, to this day, I still haven't found one that I like. Um, so honestly, I hate that I don't like those foods because everyone always wants to talk about it. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. But, 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 it, but it is what it is, you know. Um, and, and I'm always just going to be me. And, and it, it's worked for me so far. So I'm going to keep doing it. Uh, so the way you play the position, like I was saying, is so fun. You've got the arm. Your receivers were telling me today, you got the accuracy. Antonio Gibson said you can throw the deep ball, but you can hit it in a tight window, which we love. You also run over guys. You can truck the best of them. It's so fun. But I am a little nervous, if I'm being honest. So have you learned to slide yet? Yeah, I definitely have learned to slide. Um, and it's definitely something I'm going to have to do probably more than I'd like to do, more than I did in college. Um, so no, I definitely need to probably do a better job of taking care of myself. But you know, at the same time, I'm going to go out there and, and be myself and be aggressive when the opportunity presents itself. Um, but yeah, I definitely have learned to slide. And it's something that we do talk about. I think you're in the perfect position in the NFL. I really do. I think because you got the receivers, you weren't taking them, taking number one overall, so you don't have that pressure of what like a Bryce Young is dealing with. You've got new leadership. You've got Eric Bieniemy. Is Eric as good as advertised from what you're seeing? What makes him? What's that sort of like sets him apart? Yeah, I think just his commitment and how much he puts into this. Like he truly cares. Like this is the most important thing to him and he puts so much into it and he demands a lot out of his players and he's he's very hard on us but at the same time that's what we want from our offense coordinator and he just he works he's he's in here in the building more than anybody um he works so hard and he's just I can't I can't say enough about how committed he is and how bad he wants to be really good um and so we've we're all bought into him man and he's br he's brought some really good stuff over from Kansas City um so I'm so excited to get out there tell me about it. that tell me about sort of the uh, the osmosis from Patrick Mahomes and how often he probably brings him up in conversation yeah 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 he, he talks about it a lot and talks about the stuff that they did at Kansas City and we watch a lot of film on them as well um and so it's all it's cool to see how much success they had and kind of see now you can kind of see what went into it all and see how they how they were doing it and so we're trying to, we're doing some of that stuff stuff as well um so it's been it's been fun to watch um and he definitely talks about them a lot and talks about the success they had and he thinks that we're definitely capable of the same stuff here from your eyes other than scheme what is the biggest difference in the offense yeah i think just the energy we have you know i think you know the energy that eric brings every single day um you know we just kind of feed off of him you know he comes out every single day and he he demands our best you know no matter what period it is you know everything we do is full speed and it's just we come in on the field you know everyone's everyone's giving it their all um and it's just so much fun to be a part of it's a great group of guys we're i think we're solid at every single position on offense um and, our, and we have if not one of if not the best defense in the nfl this year so I'm, it's just a great opportunity for me and i'm just super excited it's not one of it's the come on for sure come they'll on. show they'll show it Niners, we, we love you but i think you know chase young might be dpoy this year mm -hmm. i don't see why not it's perfectly yeah, yeah, aligned they're gonna be good they're gonna be really good oh sure. and you get to practice against them all day okay really quick we're gonna have some fun you're talking about energy being the biggest difference we have a good vibe and energy on our show so we were asking fans for everyone just wants to get to know you okay mm -hmm. i was like i have 10 minutes to get to know everything about this guy because everyone's obsessed we're gonna do a little howl 101. Your favorite quarterback growing up was? Drew Brees. What? Really? Mm -hmm. I thought you were going to say a cowboy. Nah, I love Romo, but Drew Brees. Uh, my modeling inspiration for that hot living cover shoot was? Honestly, I don't know. I had they, I had a stylist do it, so he, <laughs> he, he kind of helped me. Um, but I really wasn't going for anything. Honestly. Do you like that stuff? Honestly, it was like my first time doing it, um, but it was pretty cool. Like I, that was my first time ever like having my makeup done and stuff like yeah. that. So it was it was a super different cool experience. Worlds. It's a whole, completely different world. The player I look up to most in the league today is. Um, gosh, it's a good one. It was Tom Brady, um, but. Mmm. That's tough. You know, I really like Russell Wilson a lot. Wow. You know, growing up, I loved Russell Wilson. I thought he was a heck of a player. Um, so I'm, I'm excited to see what he does this year. I think they'll get back on you track. You didn't say Rodgers. I thought you might say Rodgers. Russell Wilson. Commanders, Jets, Christmas Eve, by the way. And he, he said, no, not Rodgers or <laughs> Russell Wilson. Woo! Uh, the thing I want most people to know most about me is what? 
Um, just how much I love this game um, and just how, how, how much this means to me and how excited I am for this opportunity, and, and they're going to get everything I got. When I think of my happy place, I think of Chick-fil-A. <laughs> definitely, definitely probably Chick-fil-A. Um, you know, I love, I love Chick-fil-A. I love, that's, that's kind of my guilty pleasure is eating fast food. You know, I, I have to try to stay away from it the most I can. But What's yeah, the order? Can I get that? We've got some more fan questions. What's the order? For me at Chick-fil-A, um, it's a it's a four-count strip meal. Their strips are the best. Okay, I've never had their with strips. A, um, with a sweet tea, for sure. Okay, we need the sponsorship, Chick-fil-A. Holler <laughs> at your boy. Um, okay, I want to know about his hairstyle. Very much a bowl cut? Bowl cut? We're yeah, skipping. I wouldn't really call it a bowl cut. I, but I mean, me neither. Uh, I don't have, no, I, I don't change have it up. Here. I change it up from time to time, though. Uh, okay, so I think that's it. I think we'll wrap it up there. I think somebody wanted to say, is Airwolf, is Airwolf the nickname that you like? Is there a nickname you have? How should, what do you want us to call you? I really don't have a nickname. That's a, I, I want to leave that up to the fans. You know, I want the fans to, to come up with something good. But I um, haven't heard Airwolf. But. Does he have a cannon for an arm? I'll let the player do the talking. Uh, and that's it. We're going to leave it on that. Sam Howell, everybody. Sam Howell, I know the Eagles fans want to get to know him, and so does Hassan Reddick, and so does Fletcher Cox, who will be joining me. God, that offensive line better gel together more from our training camp with the Eagles. Jalen Hurts, we will talk a little bit about Brian Johnson, his quarterback coach for years one and two, and now he's taken over his play caller. All after this, Nick Sirianni joins us. Back on Up and Adams Live from training camp, taking a look at Jason Kelsey. I mean, he's a media podcast personality superstar in the offseason, but now he is in the zone. He knows what it feels like to win a Super Bowl. He knows what he feels like to fall and not get that second ring. So there he is. Oh, he's talking to Coach Sirianni and Lane Johnson. Uh, and I don't know how. Oh, oh boy. Co coach, I'm coach, good. I don't want to be liable for any sort of mishap <laughs> it was here. It was off the, off to the side it's there. It's good to see you. Nice to see you as well. Uh, you brought your family out? Always. Yeah. yeah. Not a lot of open training camp action. Talk to me. It feels very business around here. Yeah, you know, always is. I mean, but it, we want to always at the end of camp to be able to spend some time with our families. But, yeah, we know what our, our job is, is to get better every day and um, come into camp and work. And so it is. It's a business-like feel when we're working. But yeah. then when it's time to spend time with our families, we definitely do that. There's lots to get to, Coach. Lots of controversial topics, divisiveness. Nothing more polarizing, though, than the choice to put Creed on the playlist for training camp. <laughs> well, I mean, how Did are, they play are guys, that today? I don't know. I was, But I just heard Lane Johnson <laughs> thought you were a DJ. What's that story? So, Creed, nothing is like, it's like blue cheese and celery. You either love it or you don't. You do, yeah. I think there's, I think one Creed song was on my, like, playlist when I was playing back in 2003 and so I still that brings me back some memories and I and I don't pick many songs out there but when I do uh, you know I'm going to pick one that I like uh, because there's a lot of songs I don't know out there and so um, there will be there's a there's a Creed song every once in a while and Lane yeah. Johnson likes that so uh, and he must have been singing it or something that day and then I <laughs> it made me think of it and we just put it on we put it on there well they're on tour on a cruise ship but you're not thinking about that you're thinking about a Super Bowl I'm sure or just a season or just getting things right and getting better from last year What's one thing about this camp that is different than the ones prior? Um, you know, I, I think that one thing that's special about this team is that, you know, we come to work every single day because of the leaders that we have. And so to say that anything's different, I mean, you know, we, we're working just like we were going into the Super Bowl game, just like we were going into the first game last year, and it just feels business as usual. And that's what you have when you have four guys that have played at the same team for 10-plus years. Right. They know how to lead. Um, they know how to get everybody working. They know how important practice is, that practice has to feel like a game. And so it's business as usual to be. I know that's boring, doesn't make for good news, but it but is. There's it's not anything different. I mean, two new, two new offensive there's coordinators, always, that sounds fun. Sure. There's always excitement. I mean, you always are going to have excitement going into every camp. And, and um, you know, the coordinators, is, you know, Brian, you know, has been in every meeting that we've had, you know, that Shane and I ever had. Uh, Brian's been a quarterback coach is going to be in all those. And now Brian just steps into that role. Alex Tanny steps into Brian's role and we just continue on uh, as there. But defense, you know, there's it's just there's a lot getting on the same page. You know, um, you know, I hired Sean to, to do the job, not to do the job like Coach Gannon did, and Coach Gannon did a great job, but to do the job the way he sees to do the job, right? And But as a head coach, you have requirements of what you want to see out of certain things, and uh, and so it's just getting on the same page, and uh, so that, that's that been uh, that's been good. That's That's been really good. Uh, really like Sean and his energy and his uh, attention to detail, and he's doing a great job. Energy is what you're all about. You're like the most intense coach. <laughs> 
I've, I mean, you're very chill right now, which I'm quite enjoying. Because usually, <laughs> and by the way, I like this pencil visor oh, thing oh, yeah. you've okay. got going on. That's, That's a, a good, a good new yeah. look. Look, yeah. I like it. Uh, when you, I mean, you've been with Philip Rivers. He's a, you know, a. a intense guy as well but then you're with some chill guys like the frank reichs and the romeo Cornells and uh the anthony lynn's like who had to tell you to chill out the most of those guys <laughs> uh usually it's my dad it's really saying, hey relax over there um it's like a text uh, yeah yeah he's still he was a coach and he still coaches me today and so uh but no you know I think the most important thing is everything that I always learned uh, from my dad is like, hey, go to different places, figure out when you're going to different places, figure out what works, what doesn't work, you know, always make sure you're writing things down. And then once you when it's once it's your opportunity, you have a chance and always be yourself. And so this is me, uh, you know, and so. Frank's definitely had to tell me to calm down multiple times, and Frank's like a big brother to me, and so he was always able to be like, and his, sometimes it was in a nice way, and sometimes it was, he had to get after me pretty good, uh, and so uh, I would say, besides my dad, Frank is, is, is the guy, and Philip and Philip has so much energy, like, I think I just fe uh, fed off him, and uh, I wouldn't say he fed off me, but I definitely fed off him. How was your approach with Jalen different? Um, you treat everybody is is uh, different the way yeah. you, you go about it. The thing one thing I will say that's similar is, uh, you know, myself growing up with a high school football coach as a dad. And he was also a track coach. Jalen also has that. Philip also had that. Right. All of our dads were uh, football coaches while we were growing up. And that's a unique thing that's that, cool. that not everybody. I, I, we just we we all felt like a sense of. Like, there's a lot of pride in having your dad as a coach. And then also, like, just, wow, we were able to grow up uh, learning the craft that we're doing now. And so um, we have a lot of stories and a lot of memories to tell each other and, uh, it, you know, and with, with all those guys. So I would say that's what's similar uh, there. But everybody, you, you, you know, is treated a little different of how you, you know, sometimes the, the coaching point has to be done um, in a yell, and sometimes the coaching point has to be done with a smack on the butt. And it's just is it both ways with Jalen, or is it one way or the it's other? It's both ways with Jalen. Really? Yeah, he likes to he likes to be pushed, and uh, I think that's a really unique thing when when your best player, one of your best players on your team, wants to be coach hard and craves to be coach hard. That's contagious. Uh, the lock screen is a big story. What does yeah. it say about Jalen that his lock that, screen that is the loss? That people got to be careful what they videotape in team meetings. Uh, is that your message? <laughs> that was one of, no, that was, you know, but. I mean, you go viral. Are you, wait, hold on. You go viral every 20 seconds. Do you, come on. Do you, do you know, first of all, we'll get back to the lock screen. Do you know that what you say is something about a flower or a pod or the, the Chris Stapleton, who I hope isn't on the playlist because you were bawling to me for the Super Bowl, letting a little emotional release there. Do you know it's going to go off? Or are you like, why is this going viral? Uh, you know what? I'm not a social media guy and I'm not, I don't, I don't have it. Uh, yeah. and I guess I, I do watch, you know, I do watch uh, morning shows and things like that. So I do, I guess I see it on those, but no, I never know. I just, I'm just being myself. I guess. Yeah. Like when you stop at a wedding and hang out, you don't understand that that's going to go completely viral or I don't know, taking, by the way, I think you're a brilliant coach, decision maker, Jaeger, <laughs> coach Jaeger. Yeah, the, actually, this is a terrible choice. Hey, Brett, what was that? Was, that was actually Fireball, not Jaeger, right? That we had the, the they're was showing. Was it Jaeger or Fireball? Fireball. Oh, okay, that's okay. Yeah, as long we, as it was really cold. I haven't done Jaeger since college. Okay, I was yeah. going to say because everyone's saying, "See, I'm glad, I'm glad." This is what my show will do: clarify the really important things that matter. Yeah, yeah. The Jaeger. Back yes. to the lock screen. Yes. Uh, what does it say about him? I think it just. I, I think it's healthy when you let things um, drive you, right? Your past failures, and and he played a great game, but at the end of the day, right? As a team, that was a failure for us. We didn't accomplish what we wanted to accomplish that game, and uh, and so he lets that drive him, and you know, and it, and I think that's who he is. That's who he is, right? He lets his his past things that he didn't like the way they worked out drive him, and. Uh, you know, when you use that tool uh, the right way, it can be an, a very effective tool. And uh, and so it just it just shows you how determined he is. He, he's a special guy. And I think that the world really saw that that last year. We've, we've seen it the last two years and, and people in this building have seen it the last three years mm. where I was even here. He's a special guy. He's the same guy every day. And he's a great leader and a great player. And, you know, it's, it's funny when you talk about Jalen Hurts, the first thing people talk about is his intangibles. They don't even talk about all the 100%. great things he does on the field. And so you know how, spe like, 
hey, you don't even say the first thing, like, hey, remember that play he made in New Orleans where he made the guy miss and cut it back, held the guy's jersey up in the end zone, or his own jersey up in the end zone. You talk about his intangibles, and so that should tell everybody how special the guy is, that those are the first things you're talking about are his leadership, his work ethic, his his demeanor, all those things, and that's special, what makes him special. Everyone talked about that even before he got the gig, mm-hmm. when he had no, you know, it wasn't even in his sights to have that gig, that he'd be the last one to leave, and he was working so hard at it. Let's say everybody on their lock screen puts what motivates them. You're saying it drives you. What's on your lock screen for 2023? You know, that can be a lot of different things. That my, my lock screen still, my family, it, it, that picture of my family at the Super Bowl. Uh, and that doesn't mean you work, so <laughs> you work to get back to, you work to get better every day. So you give yourself a chance to, to win games. And so, but, but, you know, I, I love my family and it was, and that's, that's what motivates me. I also, Always something that also motivates me is never wanting to let anybody on the team down. Uh, down. You know, my job is to be the head coach. My job is to make decisions on fourth down. My job is to make sure the message is clear. So, you know, and when you have a team that everybody's trying to not let each other down and, and just motivated because they, you know, they don't want to let their brother down next to them, that's a special thing. And that's a special thing that this team's had the last two years and that you have to work hard at getting. And that's what we're working on now is that, you know, not only the, the stuff that we're doing on the field, but also the stuff we're doing off the field to get closer together. Because it's, be- it's not the best group of individuals that wins, it's the best teams that win. And so um, that's a great motivation for me, like my family, and then also just you know wanting to, to make sure I, I do my best job so Jason Kelsey succeeds or Jalen Hurd succeeds or Hassan Reddick or anybody else on the team. Is that Bradley Cooper or Miles Teller? Like who's the... Uh... Who's flying in on the it helicopter could be, yeah, it here? It could be anybody. Is that for you? Are you getting be airlifted? The Eagles. Eagles are pretty popular here. <laughs> that's, that, listen, that could be true. Uh, I think it's very cool that you are so vulnerable. I really do. I think it's a little bit rare. It's a little new wave. Progressive. I really appreciate it. I'm so curious on how much of that is a decision and how much of you can't control that. Whether it's an emotional moment, whether it's a playing into the players, is it all calculated? No, it goes back to just being yourself. Yeah. Um, I've always been emotional. You call my my brothers, my dad, my high school teammates, whoever. Like I'm just emotional. And um, again, you just I don't. I think when you're when you go out and you try to be somebody that you're not, especially in a leadership role, people will see through that. So, you know, I try not to pretend to to be anything but who I really but am. Like, and there's the parcels like business, business. Sure. You, and, and I grew up in that way. My first coach that I worked for was Todd Haley in the NFL, oh, who was the parcels guy. Oh, man. He showed his emotion. I forgot you had Haley. Oh, gosh. That was a lot. That must have been a lot. I liked it. Man, I wish social media was around uh, back then. But then I think about, like, you know, even just the candor of you saying that you watched the Super Bowl. Sure. When's the last time you watched it? Jacob, when's the last time we watched the Super Bowl <laughs> clips? A couple weeks ago? So Jacob is your son. You guys oh, yeah, watched we watched the yesterday. quarterback. We watched the quarterback uh, thing. Yeah, it was yeah, the other day. Are you, you know, like if I'm going through a breakup, I'm listening to Adele, you know, <laughs> and I'm putting myself in the melancholy. What's making you watch this over and over again now? I think, again, first of all, I think it's the first thing you have to do is you got to make sure that you don't make the same mistakes again. Right. And learning from the film. But then the second thing is, you know, you keep watching it. They're on all our cut-ups, right? They're on our cut-ups. It was on the, the quarter. We were watching the show, The Quarterback. I'm watching it with my son because mm-hmm. uh, he's inspiring to be a, a quarterback uh, this year on his peewee team. But he's got to beat out his, his one Hold friend. Hold on. He's, we come, you can take Bunch uh, throw some balls behind us. <laughs> Jacob, why don't you come over here? He, oh, he's a lefty. I'm not sure. He's, he's a little southpaw? He's, he's a lefty. Good, it's extinct in the NFL. <laughs> Bring him back, baby. We need a lefty. He might not beat out his buddy Seamus, so he might have to play receiver. But that he's oh. working. At, at well, watching well, what are you doing? What are you, like, you're going to let him get beat out by some other guy whose dad's like he's a... Pretty, he's a pretty good player. His dad's Jimmy in accounting? What are we talking about? So, you know, but we're, you know, we watched it because we watched the quarterback because I like watching those things with my kids because they're so, just the same way I like watching those things with our team. There's so many good coaching points from them. We're watching the last dance and we're watching, uh, and we're watching, uh, just my oldest, not my two younger. The last dance and uh, and the quarterback uh, show together. You have your hands full. Yes, I definitely but do. I feel like everybody says, "Don't think about the Super Bowl. Don't go back to it." You have this thing facing you that's this crazy 1974 thing. Yeah. I know you're doing a bit of a science project. Sure. With this and with, with the NFC not getting back, and it's all because of the offensive coordinators get poached. You're getting penalized for what you did. Sure. Steichen's gone. You know, Shanahan left. The Falcons couldn't get back. Yada 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 forever. Fran Tarkenton. We're gonna let Fran Tarkenton. <laughs> 
all respect, like be the last person to do this. What are you? What did you find out in your science experiment? Well, what are you doing about? Well, first of all, obviously, really excited for Shane. He's a great football coach, really good friend of mine. I was, I was actually just telling my wife the other day, man, I miss Shane, and that, and not anything because just the friendship and the and the connecting that that went on there. What do you miss that. most? Just Shane, just Shane being himself and like coming in and, and talking about maybe not even anything with football, but it is. It's I spend more time with him these last three, two years, and then when I was with San Diego, and then I have with my wife. So, first of all, happy for him. But secondly, I don't think it's never uh, – the goal is not – sure, the goal is always to win football games, and, and but the goal is to get better every single day. And the goal, the things that you can control are, are your process, like how you go about your business every day. And then you – Wherever your cards are at the end of the, the day, if you can look yourself in the mirror and say, I, I worked every day to get better, and, we're, and, we have, and we have some good players on our football team, and we were a good team last year, no doubt, but that doesn't mean anything. It's about working every day, and then we'll, we'll play the cards as, as we lie. But, you know, one, you, of course you're going to study what, like, why has this not happened, right? You study what, what makes a team successful after a bye? You study what makes a team successful. Right, but in what the first more game. could you have done in the Super Bowl? Like, I feel like I just want to just take you back a little bit and really in from what? Like, where do you pause and say, ah? Oh. There's a lot of. It, it's never just one play. That oh, give me one good. play, coach. Well, I will. I will. No, I mean this is the. This is it. It's not. It's always. It's always a group of, of things that you think you could do better. Whether it's a, a you know a decision that I made to to punt it in a certain situation. Whether it's a decision to not go for it on, a, you know, in our red zone and kick a field goal, or man, I could have coached that that one thing a little bit better. That you know, we missed. You know, maybe Zach Pascal had a little early block on something. Man, I should have coached him better. So the oh, but the important yeah. thing is that you always look yourself in the mirror first, and that's how people get better. Is and the leaders have to do that first. They have to look themselves in the mirror. They have to get dirty with the things that. And it's okay to get grimy and say, "Hey, this is I did, I messed this up. I didn't do this well enough." That's how you get better so it always starts there first and then every player does that and so you know and of course you want plays back and I but I look at the plays that you know that I want back as myself first and and that just drives you to to coach it harder and coach it better the next time is there a play you want back <laughs> a specific play you can't? Uh, yeah on, again coach. I just looked at myself first yeah and okay. I, I want to and I want in a situation to you know maybe on the third down to have a different approach on the third down before we had to kick a field goal on fourth down and so um you know but you know that that was the call we made at the time we thought was the best decision and at the end of the day it was it wasn't good enough and so I want maybe that third down call back prior to you know going you know kicking the field goal on fourth down you're gonna have a chance here and you've got Brian Johnson who I'm juiced about because He's awesome. I mean I don't know much about him but I look at his work and what yeah. he's been able to do when I look at you know the Anthony Richardson of it all the Dak Prescott Heisman year and then I look at two years of being the quarterbacks coach for Jalen Hurts now he's going to be the play caller what is he like as a play caller um you know he, he's he's done it before that's one thing like I think that people don't know he's done it at Florida right and I know that's not the NFL but you know that's big time college football and he's done it before he sat in all the meetings a lot of the calling it is the prep that goes into calling it right you know, I don't people may think that we go out there and just just let it rip. But there's a lot of prep that goes into it. And you have a lot of discussions on what you're going to do on on this third down in this situation on this uh, fourth down in the red zone on one area. Like all those decisions are made prior to the game. Now, the game changes and you have to adjust as it goes. Um, but that's something that we've that we're used to, too, of like, hey, they do this. We get to this. They do that. We get to that. And so. The preparation is done throughout the week and throughout the year, and, and, and Brian's been on all those all those discussions with with myself and with Shane, and uh, you know, so really excited for him to go. And I think what you know, one thing that people don't know about him, and I and I actually our our rookie quarterback Tanner was like, you played quarterback in college, and I looked at Tanner, I go, he played quarterback <laughs> in college, he was the runner up to the Heisman. Yes, he played. You're Sam like, Bradford hit the beat books, him out. Kid, yeah. Hit the books. <laughs> hit the so, books. So my he gosh. was not only a you know great coach, uh, obviously a phenomenal player, and yeah. got a lot of energy and young. Yeah, he's he's thirty six. Thirty six. We had a good young. We, I think that's how old Shane was when we hired him. I too. mean, is Kelsey older than him? I think it's close. I, oh, I think he's older. Uh, is he, I think, we'll I, have I to look know. that up. Yeah. Grizzled old veteran man. <laughs> Last one for you, and I appreciate the time. I really do. I know you have to run around, and you've got your family here today. I want you to enjoy some of that. Uh, what's the one storyline that you're hearing? I know you don't pay attention to it, but I know that you know. 
What's the one thing you're hearing or being questioned or being that you're like, where are they getting this from? Just the media at large or what the question or the criticism or just the takeaway that the, the observation that you're like, what is this? I don't know if I, I you know what? I, I, I think that the thing I hear personally more than anything is like how good the Eagles are. I don't want, I don't, I, that's right, baby. And I'm more, Here's that, my Eagles fan <laughs> producer. I'm more in the sense of like, we haven't done it. This 2023 team hasn't done anything. You know, we got to work every day and that's how our guys go about their business. And so, you know, it's a little different when we first got here in uh, 2021, this, our staff and with some, you know, with some of the players, it was like, that's a rebuilding year. And uh, that, there's no rebuilding years in Philadelphia or in the NFL. And, uh, and so, but it's, it's definitely an opposite feel, you know, there's definitely hype which is cool, you know, for the city and for the fans. But it's, it's really important that we don't buy into that hype. And that, you know, and this was, that was the feel a little bit last year when we started. I think people were saying, well, this is like the dream team. Like, no, we're nothing yet we, until we start doing it day after day. And so we're going to lean on that past experience of, of what we did last year, of just put the daily work in, got a little bit better each day, only control, control what we can control, and that's our process, and, and get better, and then we'll – see where the cards lie at the end of the year you got to get this kid the quarterback one start (laughs) you got work to do (laughs) you got work to do do, coach good luck this year my drafting deandre swift in fantasy yeah you'll have to wait i i I, I can't can't ever i can't ever help anybody with their fantasy teams oh okay (laughs) i'm sure you can't because you use everybody all over the field you got too many weapons that's why i don't draft many eagles because everybody gets the ball and they do all these crazy things each and every week we appreciate your time enjoy the family enjoy it we'll be back after this on up and adams with fletcher cox lane johnson you gotta get on that christmas album uh you got pipes you can sing i actually am not bad I'm actually not bad. I will say. We love to hear it. Brett, can I sing? I love that you have like your, your whole like world here. Up and Adams training camp tour. Should this just in? We have an update. We left LA, of course. We visited the Jets and Aaron Rodgers. They play the Browns tonight. Bills were our next stop. Got to hang out with Josh Allen and Gabe Davis. What a guy he is. Uh, commanders yesterday, new vibes. They are on the way up. And today we are in Philadelphia hanging out with the Eagles. Dun, 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 dun. This just in, we have a programming update here on the show. So we're supposed to go from here back to New York and visit with the Giants. Some, something went on there. I'm not quite sure what, but we will not be visiting the Giants. We're going to bring Victor Cruz out. We were really looking forward to it, but we are not finishing our week. But that's not all, and we're not done. On Monday, we will be with the Bengals. Ah, crowd goes wild. Ooh, ooh. Kay's coming back, baby. I will be with the Bengals at camp. Probably won't get to talk to Joe Burrow, but I know I can get a sense of what's going on there for you guys out there. And they are opening their arms and welcoming us to go check out practice. So we will be in Cincinnati. I'm excited. You've gotten the queen of the jungle experience and all that. I haven't been with these fans in person yet. I can't wait. If it's not an open camp or fan, can we make it that? Do I have, as the queen of the jungle, do I have that power? I think that's within your jurisdiction. All I want is the juice. I want the fans. These camps were incredible. I cannot be more thankful to the FanDuel partnership side for setting them up. All of the PR people, the team personnel, all of the players, the handlers, everyone for handling us, dealing with us, and making things so easy. So from us here at Up and Adams to those teams, to the Jets, to the Bills commanders, uh, and of course here in Philadelphia and the Bengals Monday, we appreciate you. We thank you and we'll see you Monday from Cincinnati.